Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the continuing adventures of uh, our octopod wizard, uh, Octowitch. Um, continuing the run precisely where we left off, as is our pretty much the only option we have in Dungeon Crawl, where there's no such thing as save states or anything like that. Um, but yeah, uh, last we left off, I had finished collecting uh, all of the Pandemonium runes. And in addition to the four, I, I, I consider there to be five dungeon runes because I include the abyss rune in that and I don't include the golden rune. But anyway, bottom line is, in addition to the uh, lair runes and the, go the silver rune in the uh, vaults, we have collected a total of nine. And what's left is the abyss, hell, and the tomb. All of which I am actually pretty prepared for at this point. I just need to actually get out of here and start doing them. Uh, my ideal situ scenario for this video would be to find a quick abyss exit, uh, and then escape into the abyss, and then spend however long is required in there to acquire the rune, and uh, get out. That would be a good video, or at the very least, uh, pick up the rune. My, the opposite, of course, would be for me to die. I, I really, really don't want to die. Um, that's the problem I have, honestly, with recording crawl videos the way I do. I feel like if I only show you my successes, uh, it... Hmm, how do I put this? You see, here's the thing. I could n not show you the runs where I died the first uh, ten turns or whatever. Um, but if I do that, then you'll be under the impression either A, wow, Ahmed's really good when I'm not, or B, uh, that the game is really just, he's just getting lucky every time, and I don't get that lucky. What I prefer to do is play races that can almost always have a lucky, quote-unquote lucky run, play races for whom the randomness is almost a non-factor. And if I'm not going to do that, then just do multiple runs on the same video. Okay, I have four false startups, and then you see the real thing. That, that would be better. But in the past, I have uploaded a video that was some three minutes long, because once I sit down to record a video and I hit record, you guys are going to see the end result. That's just my system. I was sorely tempted after this Octopode run and the technical difficulty I had with the first video to uh, not post it. I mean, my logic there was, well, it's got no sound, so it kind of sucks, and whatever. But at that point, what I would have done is continued the run not showing the beginning, and that's just not right. How do you know that I did what I say, say I did? How do you know I even got to that position? Or, you know, you can assume any number of things. If I if I saw a person who started off in the middle of the lair and said, okay, so this is how I'm going to make this troll wizard work, I would say, I don't care. Troll wizards, those things are going to have a hard time surviving the first three floors. And, you know, the next three floors, the next three. I want to see your troll wizard deal with his crappy origins. Because once, if you can skip a character to level 20 automatically, pretty much any character has the ability to learn anything by that point. Okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but, but you get my message. Anyway, so I always show everything I can when I make these videos, and I try to have complete series as much as possible. And the few exceptions I've had, like doing Shinigami or doing uh, where I started off standing over the Orb of Zot, or where I did a run of the slime pits specifically on request because apparently somehow I had never done that before. Uh, these examples have been A, because I needed to show a certain segment of the game, and B, done with a character who was average to below average for that level, and an OP race class so that there was no question of how I got there. I like that to be very obvious carried on my sleeve. Sorry about that, I'll get off my soapbox now, it's just Blasting my way through Pandemonium doesn't exactly leave a whole lot to discuss. In terms of tactics, it's pretty obvious what I'm doing. I'm channel, 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 auto travel, kill with Firestorm. Even things that are as small as one hit point of Deftibus or whatever. Those things can die to one magic dart. I'm using a nine mana Firestorm on them. Why? Because I'm a psychotic octopus. A psychtopus, as I like to call it. I've never actually called it a second person on that. All right, well, that's another floor without an exit. Let's let's keep moving. Um, now that I've killed all of the Pandemonium Lords, the only notable finds that are left in Pandemonium are 
random interesting drops, uh, random pandemonium lords on each floor, the tall black figures that you've seen me take on. And um, I say random, and I do mean random. Their stats are rolled uh, for each one a little bit differently. Um, that and ziggurats. Uh, it's always possible to run into another ziggurat, and if I do, I'm probably going to attempt it just because I like the opulence of it, not because... Oop. Okay, this is a special area called Hellion Island. Uh, I know about the name because of the crawl forums, and because I once complained about this as being bullshit, unfair, etc. Basically, it's an uh, island surrounded by fire covered in Hellions. Hellions are able to do Hellfire, which is an irresistible attack uh, against anything they can see. The advantage I have is I don't have to see them to know they're there, and I am smart enough to firestorm with them just out of my line of sight so that they die and I don't. But their Hellfire, by the way, uh, it's irresistible entirely. You can have resist fire plus 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 and Hellfire will still hurt. And it hurts a lot. I've, you can take 30, 40 damage. The reason I consider stacking health to be a legitimate tactic is because Hellfire will always hit you no matter how good your defenses are otherwise. I mean, it's a burst attack, so, you know, a burst of Hellfire, so your evasion 20 or 30 isn't going to make a difference. Your shield isn't, you can't shield a burst. You just suffer. Okay, but anyway, it looks like they're dead, so that's, oh, fuck me, man, it's a Hell Sentinel. He can also obviously do Hellfire, though his is not smite targeted, his has to aim, so I can at least tr try to keep these things in between me and him, and, ah, oh, fuck me. You see how much damage that dealt? That hurt like a bitch. I'm gonna blink away. I just drained all my mana to zero because of a miscat or because of a crystal ball. And now I became alive again, so fuck. Um, let's dig my way into this wall. Dig my way back. Make a dragon. And this is why I always like being at higher than... Uh, this is why I always like remaining at reasonable food, so that I could immediately start channeling despite being in human form. And by human, I mean octopus, obviously. That, that goes without saying. I mean, obviously when I say octopus, I mean human, I mean octopus. Why would you even think anything else? What are you, a veterinarian? Okay, Hell Sentinel's dead. Yeah, I would have... Ah, I would have benefited a lot from memorizing Iron Shop at this point. But I would still need to raise my Earth Magic to make it viable. Just kill him, please. Thank you. I'll use the fact that my dragons use elemental damage to my advantage. Or, yeah, some of my use elemental, but some don't to my advantage. In particular, the uh, Iron Dragon and the Quicksilver Dragon use physical irresistible damage. Oh my god, there's more of you idiots? Oh, it's, it's the Hell Sentinel. Hell sent ye. It's sad too because very often those pan the if you're having a hard time finding the generic pandemonium ring or rune, it's located on Hellion Island. I did pick up my scrolls, right? Yeah, okay, good. Okay, well that's another fail attempt at shit, this video is probably gonna end with me just getting out of here by any means. I would have liked to do more than just that. We'll, we'll see how long it takes. Ooh! A bloody triple sword. Can I wield that one-handed? I don't think so. No, I can't. Never mind then. Uh, the thing is, tripled swords with good brands are some of the highest damage weapons in the game. I'm pretty sure the triple sword, holy triple sword, is like one of the strongest weapons in the post-game. Uh, I would imagine that the triple sword of necromancy will deal even more damage, except it's useless against necromantic resist enemies and in the end game, you're fighting demons mostly, so there's that. You all are just gonna get burned to cinders, though. Sorry, there's just no other way this can end. I wish there was, I really truly do, except I'm lying through my teeth and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> that felt so good. Blocking these pixels on the screen as I burn them to death from behind the nice safe wall of summons. Alright, keep that swiftness up. Let's even turn on my evasion and just keep running. 
Yeah, man, every time I see a cloak like that, I may, I think that it must be a cloak of preservation, and I cry a little inside. And then I remember that in this whole game, there's barely ever been a time where I needed a consumable and didn't have it. A couple times where I wanted an extra, sure. Um, you know, but I've never been mutated and desperately looking for cure mutation because I took too much, too many precautions for that to happen. I've never desperately needed a recharging scroll. Needed, you know, not wanted in order to add to a collection or something. Well, there's the way out, so that's the plus. Um, let's see, how long have we been at it? Not nearly long enough. Good. Let's uh, ditch some stuff. There's really nothing to ditch. Um, am I using... A, uh, let's go ahead and put on a ring of fire in favor of Sea Invisible. No, I like Sea Invisible right now, actually. It's doing a lot of good. Um, yeah, Sea Invisible is actually doing too much good for me to just pass up that easily. Um, and I'm about to go into the Abyss, so it might even be more useful. Yeah, so let's ditch nine potions of curing and seven potions of heal wound, uh, because I don't need any of them. And then you'll wonder why I worry about these things shattering. Uh, potions of restore abilities, I'm up to six again. I, I was just curiosity, how many are sitting here? Like nine? Yeah, okay, cool. I'm just gonna drink one real quick. Or better yet, I'm gonna eat the real jelly. Now that's off my back, I don't have to worry about it, and I'm at full health. Okay, good. Uh, let's see if we can set a record for finding the abyss rune, shall we? Um, I am abysmal at finding the abyssal rune, so... That's why I like leaving auto pickup turned on, otherwise I would have missed a couple other runes too. Let's go ahead and get some dragons on board. I don't know if they'll come with me or not. And good god, I just miss I just missed from 47. Is this the abyss? That better be the abyss. It is the abyss. Okay, good. In we go. Wow, that is a lot of altars of Lugonu. Um, it's weird too, because he corrupted the fucking temple, so yeah. Uh, I'm going to burn a bunch of recharge scrolls on this invisibility wand so that it gets up to maximum and then just not worry about it ever again. A as you all may have noticed, I've never really needed it. Except, like, that one time. But, hey, it's nice to have your wands at max and when you don't have anything else to use them on, so... What else are you going to do, right? Oh no, my precious potion of porridge and curing, whatever would I do? How about brutally slaughter the one dumb enough to stop it? You scroll enchant armor then, do I? Let's in fact drop them all. Mm-hmm. Blowing them up, blowing them up. Breaking the law, breaking the law. Breaking the law, breaking the law. Breaking the law, breaking the law. Breaking the law, breaking the breaking the law. Breaking the law, breaking the law. Okay. Things are getting tedious. That's what I like. Now, th it's not, you know, there are still a lot of things that I would like to have. Um, well, no, that th there are still some things that I would like to have. Uh, for example, I'm still working with basic sustainability uh, rings. I would love to have an artifact sustainability ring that also gave me, like, int plus six. Of course, that's pretty much true of everything. I would love every uh, ordinary ring I have to be int plus six. I can ditch my AC plus 8 ring pretty comfortably at any time, because for the most part, you'll notice I've barely been attacked at melee range for this entire game, and the few times it happened, I was more than able to blink away half the time. So yeah. I'm actually curious, does... nope. So controlled blink does not activate any faster or more reliably in... Uh, Control Blink does not activate any faster or more reliable. Control Blink is still limited by the ability of the Abyss to cancel teleport, tra tra translocations and teleportations. Um, that said, it totally works uh, for the semi control. Oh, just ditch it. I don't want Berserk Rage. Apparently, I miscasted Transmutation and took damage. That sucks. No, never mind. I was being attacked by a vampire very different. Whom I, of course, responded to with the disproportionate force of a firestorm in his ass. Dear God, I hope it was in his ass. That would have been funny as hell. Ah, that burrito was really extra spicy. 
Okay, let's see. Um, flight is something that I've generally liked in Abyss. I feel like it opens your mobility a lot. That plus dig means that most of what the Abyss uses to restrict you, it can't really use. But as an octopode, deep water is no limitation. So really, it's just fire I would be getting a benefit over with flight. So really, there's no need to use it at all. Mm -hmm. And also, I can always do a controlled blink, well, semi-controlled blink, to attempt to get past a pool of fire. But I would have much rather not be in that situation, seeing as to how there's one, no guarantee that I actually activate it. Second, uh, it's very expensive uh, for something... You know, if you just try to cast blink three times, that's six mana, no problem. You try to cast control blink six times, that's 18-ish uh, mana? 20-ish mana? 21 mana? Yeah, that's a lot more. Sanity check. No, I did not, in fact, have that. Okay. I must say, I, octopodes are considered a weaker race, quite like Felids. And where Felids answered a mistake that, you know, gave me a luxury that I didn't have, which was the ability to make a mistake that was fatal and not lose the game instantly. Uh, since then, I've become a much more adept player. And the limitations of the Felid, you know, no equipment of any kind, basic, well, half no, massive, massive limitation of equipment, virtual, no armor, and uh, severe penalties associated to most of your aptitudes. You know, I, I, I became weary of that very quickly. Also, it's not that I, it's not that I can't win with a Felid, I totally can. It's not that I don't like Felids, I still do. But rather that... I understand now why they are considered a challenge race, because the only problem they answer is what, frankly, is a problem that a player of Crawl who's good shouldn't have. Stopping paying attention and doing something that gets you killed. Oh, it's an angel. That's terrifying, except that I've been to Holy Pan. You must be one of the angels that I sent to hell. You lost your way and came here. I'll have to refund your ticket, or better yet, give you my hell back, hell back guarantee. Okay, I don't know, maybe it's just having powerful translocation spells, but- Oh, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, this is it. This is an odd-looking place. This is probably where the rune is. Let's get some dragons online before I open that glowing door. And then back up, because that's a lot of Ophans, and fuck them. Okay. Fire is done. There's some cherubs. Let's blow them up. You yeah, stupid TSO. Why would you set up a goddamn temple to yourself here? Okay. Rather than risk there being a teleport trap right there, I am going to use apportation to bring it to me. And then pick it up. There we go. I have collected the next room. Get me out of here. Oh, right. That's... That's kind of part of the problem. It's interesting, though. I, I found the rune before I found an exit. That's uh, that's certainly a positive. Maybe it's just my powerful translocation spells, because, you know, my translocation is trained pretty high. But that's a fail blink. 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 That's a success. That's a fail. That's a fail. That's a success. That's a success. That's a fail. That's a fail. That's a fail. That's a... Okay, never mind. It had felt like I was succeeding a lot more often than I should have, but... For anybody who actually reads my comments on my videos, which occasionally do contain spoilers, but generally don't, uh, you may have noted that I talked about how humans are pattern finders, and we see patterns whether or not they exist, and we tend to reason from limited sample sizes, whether we realize we're doing it or not. Yeah, kind of totally just been guilty of that right now. Um, I, let's just get out of here. Oh, god damn it. I will say, I really do like this version of the Abyss. It's amorphous and all, but it doesn't make you feel helpless. Whereas the new Abyss, every every time it shifts, it generally puts you in face with a monster that you can barely run from and you are going to die against. <clears throat> it Like, there are monsters that instantaneously take you from fully healthy to fully red sick where you can't regenerate. It's like a Komodo Dragon Bite. I've noticed this happens. If I have targeting yellow, 
and I fight blast it, but then there's fog blocking my vision of it, those squares stay yellow, and I instinctively think that there must be a haloed enemy, like an angel, hanging out there. I'd ideally like to get us out of the abyss before I end the vid, but uh, technically I'm already cr out of my cross my time for today. So whatever, I'll uh, keep going for a bit longer and just hope to God nobody calls me or anything. If I get a phone call, I'm gone though. God, it's satisfying. I'm blowing everything up with fire. Yeah, I really do just have a very simple, regular set of spells that I like to use a lot. And they're good because they get the job done. You know what? Half of you are probably summoned, and I don't care. You're all just going to die together. So how's that work out for you? That work for your one o'clock? Jerk face. Alright, well, let's start auto-traveling again. Sooner or later. The Abyss is one of those places that's just generally irritating. For those of you who don't know what I keep talking about when I keep saying they change things in version 0 0.12 with this, uh, the new Abyss has five floors. But unlike other areas that have floors, it maintains its amorphous pattern, like this. Uh, if you find a gateway deeper in the abyss, I think they're six times more common on the first floor than exits are, or something like that. The deeper you go, the more rapidly the terrain changes, the more dangerous the enemies become, and more frequently they spawn. But also, the rune will not spawn until you are three floors deep. Don't worry, getting down a floor isn't really that hard. It's about as hard as finding an altar to Lugonu is, uh, and or an exit in our abyss here. Or, after and, uh, the rune itself doesn't spawn until you're three floors down, and uh, exits spawn more frequently, in addition to everything else that goes wrong. So if you are a caster like me, who isn't actually scared of the abyss for whatever reason, being in the new abyss means that you can get out of it much faster, well, relatively faster. One really cool change they have made is if you have the rune, then abyss exits appear constantly, as if you now hold some power over the place. Because let's be honest here, very few players are going to be in the abyss except either A, by intent, uh, to find the rune and then get out, or B, because they had the misfortune of getting abyssed, which, which if it happens at a low level, is going to be a death sentence on the first floor pretty much no matter what, unless you get really lucky or... You know, use your whole toolkit and get a little lucky. Or B, instead of a death sentence, it's uh, gonna end with you just waiting a long time before you get out. So, this solution of theirs is, if you want, you can make the abyss harder, but you can also get out faster. Which I approve of. And of course, once you have the rune already, well, we're just gonna keep making it easier and easier for you to get out, because you obviously don't need to be here anymore. You already are good enough to have been here and collected the rune. So, you know, if you want to stay, that's one thing, but otherwise, get the fuck out. No, nobody minds. Alrighty. This is getting tedious. As I knew it would. But hey, rune found, rune early, and better yet, I got it out of the jaws of that stinking TSO temple. To think, those goddamn holy folk thinking they could snag my rune. Okay, I am not happy being alive next to this guy. You know what, let's just make some dragons and beat him up. I'll strangle him while I do it too. He can't cast Orb of Destruction very effectively at melee range, and we'll just body slam him till he dies. You gotta love that too. That was a fucking ancient lich. I've seen, hell, I've run characters on Zot 5 who need to cry, scream, go berserk, etc., just to touch them. Me, I am a non-tank. I am a caster. And I'm just staying there next to him, grabbing him and beating him up with a stick. And not even a staff of fire stick, you know, which actually might deal better damage because I'm a fire mage. No, no, no. An actual fucking stick, the channeling or conjurations or whatever. Alright. Fire magic is probably as good as I'm going to get it right now. Let's let's work on necromutation. 
And through it all, just keep that intel that HP going up and up and up. There's no need to stop that. I can get fire better as well, but you know, fire storm is already the subject of two to three enhancers at any given time. Like, let's see what spell power is like right now without the fire ring. Maxed. Is it without the fire ring? Yeah, without the fire ring, it's maxed. With the fire ring, uh, I would have to multiply by 1.5 and then do the step down. But once you're seeing full, the, the image of the bars is at full, you're still 50 points away from actual max damage. I will up to 50 points away from actual max damage, but you're so close that it barely matters. Alright, well, unfortunately, as much as I wanted to finish Abyss in just one clean video, between escaping from Pandemonium and finding the Abyss and then clearing it, it's beginning to take too long, and I'm probably just going to call for quits and finish it up next vid. So y'all will have to see me next week uh, to take on the rest of this place, but, uh, yeah. Sometimes it's just more satisfying to beat him up by hand. Especially when you remember that I have double regen rings on, both of them artifacts. So yeah, you know, I should stop ever bitching about how bad I had it in that ziggurat. Truth of the matter is, I got not what I wanted, but not what I asked for, but everything I needed. I'm pretty sure I just got translocated to a different area of the abyss altogether. Which incidentally seems like a really open area, which leads me to believe maybe there's like an exit nearby or something. I don't know. Hoping. No, it's a Zom area, that's what it is. That's a lot of Zom altars to surround one Lugonu altar. Anyway. I'm surprised they didn't put an exit in the middle of the Zom thing and then have teleport traps surrounding the exit. That's what I'd do. What the hell is this? It doesn't look like an altar of Zom, it looks like a skeleton. Oh, it is. It's a stone giant skeleton on an altar of Zom. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> the constant presence of all the abominations means that my piety doesn't suffer from being in here too long. Okay. Alright, enough chit chat. That's about enough. I'm gonna call it the quits here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, thus far, we've collected 10 of the 15 runes. I will see you all next time.